So today's the day, everyone. Voting has begun. By this time tomorrow, we will know if Boris Johnson has secured five years as Prime Minister, whether it be a majority or minority, or whether Jeremy Corbyn will be Prime Minister with a minority, or whether either man will resign, depending on the outcome. If Boris has a minority, Jeremy doesn't have to resign. He might, should, really, maybe, actually, yes, he should. But he may not. His time in the spotlight has been quite short-lived. Rather interestingly, there have been some last-minute pledges and speeches and rallies and, yes, we must hear all of that. No, we're not going to hear that here, I promise. I just want to focus our attention on one thing. One thing that caught my eye, one thing that made me smile, one thing that made me chuckle quite a bit. And that was when GMB, Good Morning Britain, a morning television show in the UK on ITV or Channel 3, tried to catch Boris Johnson while he was delivering milk crates. And when a reporter went up to approach him live on national television, his minder said, oh, for fuck's sake. Morning, Prime Minister. Will you come on uh, Good Morning Britain, Prime Minister? Mm. Uh, just a reaction here from one of the minders. Uh, wow. Okay, the don't push that too much. On his face. Wow. That minder. And blocks the path of the reporter after trying to, let's face it, ambush the premier. Several minutes passed because Boris went into the rather large chill van in which he came out with some orange juice. When asked again, he said, "Of course." However, since polling opens today and that was yesterday, it's unlikely. When this happened, many mocked Boris for this. Hiding in a fridge, are we? It was quite funny, I'll give him that. Hell, even Jeremy Corbyn saw it and used it. I take questions on our manifesto. John McDonnell does and everybody else. I don't have to go and hide in a fridge. If he hadn't, I would have been very disappointed in him. I should say where I live, it has been a conservative area for a long time. A lot of UKIP voters around here as well. Brexit was quite the turner. More recently, though, I have seen a lot of Labour pickets and signs in the windows of people's homes and shops. I personally would not vote for Labour at this election. Your spending plan is irresponsible. It is utterly insane. If it was progressively done over a period of 20 to 30 years, it could perhaps work. Perhaps. But you want to get this done within five years, maybe ten at most. That is unreasonable. To go into a new decade, afraid. Then again, the same can be said for the Conservatives for those who believe that the NHS is on the table in a Trump-style US-UK trade deal. No matter how many times it has been said it's not on the table, I'm starting to think politicians have yet to realise all they have to do is legislate that it cannot be sold. Perhaps they've explored this and decided, ah, too much effort. Or it can't be done, I'm not sure. For those who are UK nationals, I am very interested to know if you intend to vote and who you intend to vote for, whether it be the party or the MP you believe is best to represent your constituency, because now we're voting on something that affects the entire country, but in reality, most of us are only interested in what happens locally. So where I live, it is more than likely the Conservatives will hold this seat with Natalie Elphick taking over from her husband, Charlie, while he deals with the charges he currently faces that won't go to court until next year. If he's found guilty, expect a video. If he's found innocent, expect a video. The man has been a politician around here for a long time, and he's done a lot. Many would say he hasn't done enough. Bit hard to do much when austerity had to be introduced, which is the same thing that happens every time after a Labour government has been in power, which is another reason for me to dread a Labour government, because history is against them. I can excuse 1945 to 47, I really can, because of World War II, but I can't excuse all the other ones since. As far as policy goes, Boris is offering a very neutral stance without going too far out there, pandering a little when it comes to tax, and that's about it. And of course, to get the leaving of the EU done. Labour are putting forward what they consider a radical, comprehensive, most Labour left-leaning ever kind of manifesto ever to exist, ever, which costs a lot of money. And when I see it, along with what we make and what we pay in tax at this current level, and their plans for tax reform to essentially tax every part of our existence ever, and that's not me underselling or overstating, that is what it is, 
taxes are going to go up, whether you like it or not. Every major think tank has said that even lower income earners are going to pay more tax under Labour. Labour say it will be offset by benefits. No, it won't. Or how about instead of offering those benefits, you don't tax people so much? Or the tax breaks, which don't actually come into effect or actually help anyone ever. They've never helped anyone. Notice how I left out Brexit Party, Liberal Democrats and the SNP. In reality, I don't believe they're going to win any number of seats that could be considered a threat. SNP perhaps dominating Scotland again, of course. But Scotland isn't bigger than the rest of the UK. And they don't hold enough seats unless they form a minority government to be in power. And by that I mean form a coalition with that of Labour. If the Conservatives, even if they win enough seats or win more seats, are unable to secure a majority. This is all going to be very interesting. Today is going to be interesting. I might stream tonight, depending on how tired I am, covering some of the election itself. Understandably, tomorrow will be simply titled, And the winner is... See you all then.